Hello everyone, my name is Maricar, together with Hina Ben, Lavnian, and Deborah Berlin, we are the Group 5. In this presentation, our group will be discussing Katie Erickson's theory of caritative caring. This includes who is Katie Erickson, what's her theory all about, the major concepts, fundamental ideas, and assumptions. At the end of the discussion, a case will be presented applying the theoretical framework based on a created scenario. So let's begin. The theorist. Katie Erickson is a Finland Swedish nurse born on November 18, 1943 in Jacobsund, Finland. She graduated nursing at Helsinki Swedish Medical Institute in 1965, then spent two more years at the same institution to finish her public health nursing specialty education in 1967. Katie studied the nursing teacher education program at Helsinki Finnish School of Nursing and graduated in 1970. She received her master's degree in philosophy in 1974 as well as her licentiate degree in 1976, both from the University of Helsinki. In 1982, she defended her doctoral dissertation in pedagogy, entitled The Patient Care Process, an approach to curriculum construction within nursing education, the development of a model for patient care process, and an approach for curriculum development based on the process of patient care. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Erickson worked in various fields of nursing practice and simultaneously continued her studies. Her main area of work has been in teaching and research. Since 1970s, Erickson has systematically deepened her thoughts about caring including developing an autonomous, humanistically-oriented caring science that paved the way for developing an ideal model for caring that formed the basis for the caritative caring theory. Erickson is known as one of the few caring science researchers in the Nordic countries developed a caring theory. She has produced an extensive list of textbooks, professional journal articles, and scientific reports. Erickson received various awards and honors for her professional and academic accomplishments and became a leading figure in the field of caring sciences. Katie Erickson passed away on the 30th of August 2019 at the age of 75. Let's proceed to the theory, the theory of caritative caring. Alicott and Tomey in 2010 stated that according to Katie Erickson in 1992, and quote, caritative caring means that we take caritas into use when caring for human being in health and suffering. Caritative caring is a manifestation of love that just exists. Caring communion, true caring, occurs when the one caring a spirit of caritas alleviated the suffering of the patient. This nursing theory distinguishes between caring ethics as a functional relationship between the patient and the nurse, and nursing ethics. Nursing ethics are the ethical principles that guide a nurse's decision-making abilities. Caritative caring entails love and charity known as caritas and respect and reverence for human holiness and dignity. According to the theory, suffering that occurs due to lack of caritative care is a violation of human dignity. To deepen the understanding of caritative caring theory, Hina Ben will discuss the major concepts. Hello everyone, I am Hina Patel and I am going to present a major concept of caritative caring theory. The act of caring is the art of making something very special out of something less special. The major concept of the theory are as following. First, number one, the dignity. One of the basic concepts of caritative caring, ethics, human dignity. It's a partially absolute dignity and partially relative dignity. Absolute dignity is granted the human being through creation while the relative dignity is influence and form through culture and extended context. A human being's absolute dignity involves the right to be conformed as a unique human being. Invitation The act of welcoming patient to caring communion by carer is called invitation. The concept of invitation provides a place for human being to rest, a place that breathes genuine hospitality and where the patients appeal for charity 
meets with the response suffering suffering is a ontological concept described as a human being struggle between goal and evil in a state of becoming suffering implies in some sense dying away from something and through reconciliation a wholeness of body soul and spirit is recreated when the human being's holiness and dignity appear suffering is unique isolated total experience and is not synonym with pain suffering related to illness to care and life there are three different form of suffering suffering related to illness is experienced in connection with illness and treatment when the patient experience suffering due to absence of care which is always violation of patient's dignity not to be taken seriously not to be welcome being blamed and being subjected to the exercise of power are different form of suffering related to care in the situation of being a patient the entire life of human being may be experienced as suffering related to life the suffering human being erickson used this concept to describe the patient the patient refer to the concept of patient's latin word which means suffering the patient is suffering human being or human being who suffers and patiently endure reconciliation this refer to the drama of suffering a human being who suffer want to be confirmed in his suffering and be given time and space to suffer and reach reconciliation in reconciliation the importance of sacrifice emerges reconciliation is a prerequisite of caritas caring culture erickson used the caring culture concept instead of the environment it is based on cultural elements such as traditions ritual and basic values caring culture transmits an inner order of value preference or ethos the different construction of culture have their basis in the changes of value that ethos experience respect for the human being his or her dignity and holiness form the goal of communion and participation in caring culture the origin of the concept of culture is in reverence tending cultivating and caring dimension these dimension are central to the basic motive of preserving and developing a caring culture thank you very much our next presenter lovenian will discuss the fundamental idea about the theory Hi everyone, my name is Lovnian and I'm going to present Major Assumption in Katie Erickson's Theory of Caritative Caring. Erickson states that Erickson's Theory of Caritative Caring is based in axiom and thesis. Erickson defined axiom as the fundamental truths in relation to the concept of the world. On the other hand, thesis as the fundamental statements concerning to the general nature of caring science. and their validity is tested through basic research. So there are some points and basic assumption under these two major assumption according to Erickson 2002 as cited in Alligood 2014 in page 177. So I'm going to first present some points and basic assumption under axiom. So human beings are fundamentally an entity of body, soul and spirit. It is religious being and holy. Human beings live in a reality that is characterized by mystery, infinity, and eternity. Having these entities, Erickson emphasizes that human being is fundamentally a religious being. This reflects our soul and spirit. But all beings, human beings, have now recognized these dimensions. We usually tend to our patients physically, but in caritative caring, we tend to the patient and all levels of patient suffering. We approach the patient as a whole. So human dignity. Human dignity means accepting the human obligation of serving with love, of existing for the sake of others. Caring for others with love, dignity, and respect should come to every human being naturally. 
Communion is the basis of all humanity. Halligut 2014 states that according to Erickson 2002, human being is fundamentally dependent on communion, that human being is dependent on another, and this another means that it is the relationship between the conquered other, human being, and the abstract other, some form of God. Caring is something human by nature. It is also a call to serve and loved. Suffering. Suffering is an inseparable part of life. Suffering and health are each other's prerequisites. The last point under axiom is health. Health is more than the absence of illness and it implies wholeness and holiness. So I will now discuss some points and assumption under thesis. So we have ethics. Ethics According to Erickson 2010, being a carrier of ethics means having openness to the unknown and the courage to push limits. Erickson believes that this is the meaning in the caring context of her theory. The basic motive of caring is the character's motive. The basic category of caring is suffering. Caring implies elevation of suffering in charity love, faith, and hope. Caring communion forms the context of meaning of caring and derives its origin from the ethos of love, responsibility, sacrifice, namely caritative caring. The natural basic caring express truth tending, playing, learning in a sustained caring relationship. So health means the movement of becoming being and undoing, while striving for wholeness and holiness which is compatible with endurable suffering. So let's define in doing, in being, and in becoming. So in doing is all about the person's thoughts concerning health are focused on healthy life habits and avoiding illness. In being is all about how the person strives for balance and harmony. And lastly, in being is that the human being becomes whole on a deeper level of integration. So everyone, those are the major major assumptions of Katie Erickson's theory of corrective caring. After knowing and understanding the theory of corrective caring, the guru created a scenario for a case study that depicts the theory in a clinical practice. This includes client assessment, nursing intervention on rational, client goals, and client evaluation. To discuss this part, the next presenter is Deborah Lynn. Hello everyone, I am Deborah Lynn and I will be presenting the case scenario that our group created where we applied Erickson's theory of caritative caring. Our case scenario, a nurse is working with an indigenous man, 31 years old, who was admitted to the hospital due to difficulty of breathing and productive cough. The nurse learned that the patient is homeless, alcoholic, and smoker. Further interview re revealed that the patient was neglected and abused by his parents who were victims of drug addiction. He was left in foster care when he was younger. He has no other surviving family. He is also suffering from depression but refused to seek medical help. When the nurse starts assessing the patient, he started crying and he stated that his parents should have killed him so he will not be suffering. He refused to be cared because of how he looks and his cultural background. He was reluctant to express his feelings. However, after the nurse applied or implement caritative caring, the patient verbalized that he wants to take actions to improve his well-being and he trusted the nurse for his care. Client Assessment Erickson described patient as a suffering human being, cited in Allegood and Tommy 2010. Patient suffers related to illness, to care, and to life. In the case scenario, patient does not only suffer related to illness, which is productive cough, difficulty of breathing, being alcoholic, and smoker, but also suffers related to care. The patient is homeless. He has no home. He has no surviving family and parents that, that will support him and love him. 
he was left in foster care and he refused to be cared because of his cultural background and he stated that his parents should have killed him so he will not be suffering. Intervention Curative caring has major concepts, but Caritas is its principal concept, Nihan 2020. Caritas, according to Erickson, is caring, end quote, caring which is based on human love and having true interest in doing something for another person by attending in a deep sense, feeling responsible for another person. It is a human love and mercy. It is willingness to serve another person, end quote, cited on 20, Nihan 2020, paragraph 12. So, in this case scenario, these are the moments and time that our patient needs caritas. Our patient needs not just a nursing care plan to treat their productive cough and difficulty of breathing, but a caring nurse. Um, this is where they need not just a caring nurse, but a caring human being. Someone that will support them, that ready to listen, and that ready to spend time with them. Um, our interventions include ensuring patient-centered uh, communication, um, which involves focusing on patient needs and values. This is actually associated with improved patient trust and satisfaction. And to do this, we have to encourage the patient to verbalize their feelings and their thoughts. We have to spend time with them. We have to ensure patient concerns are being heard and addressed. By doing this, um, we're showing that we're showing love, respect, and and kindness to the patient. Um, we're showing them that we are here, ready, and willing to listen and understand their situation. We are here to ready and assist um, to assist them in any possible way to cope up. Uh, Mihan 2020 listed value habits habits that support Erickson's. Um, caritative caring or uh, caritas. Um, this includes having patient, meaning spending time with the patient, not rushing, not rushing to get information, giving time to express thoughts and feelings, um, being attentive, listening attentively to, to his concerns without being distracted and recognizing his concerns, having empathy, putting our shoes on his shoes, understanding his experience and imagining ourselves in his situation, being gentle, being tender, being kind, being compassionate, being joyful and peaceful. Um, Caritas is something that is not, that the patient doesn't see, but something that they feel. So in this case, case scenario, as, um, as described, patient goal is to improve his current well-being and our evaluation. So after the nurse implemented caritative caring, um, this is when the patient, the, the nurse spent time talking to the patient, encouraging him to verbalize his feelings, showing empathy. Um, when the nurse did not give up to care for him, even when he, the, even when he refused to be cared, um, when the nurse showed him support and kindness, which was not, which, which he was not able to experience from his, uh, uh, family, own family, when the nurse showed him love and he never, love that he never experienced from his parents. Um, after this implementation, um, the patient verbalized that he wanted to take actions to improve his well-being and also in addition, he came to realize that the nurse who showed him love and care can be trusted in helping him cope up and be well. Um, this is the end of our case scenario and our presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Um, please be safe and be healthy. Thank you.